episode 12 of the 52 Weeks of Reefing. This one was called Proof Live Sand Isn't As Dull As You Thought. And uh, I don't know if you thought Live Sand was dull, because it might be, but it is not. There's here. more to sand than you think there <laughs> There's would be. There's a lot to, yeah. Um, yeah. Especially if you go without it. Then I think we actually learned a lot of sand since then. So mm -hmm. uh, this is one of those ones where the conversation about sand has definitely evolved uh, since where we're at. I think there's still a lot of unknowns about sand that uh, I'm going to poke a couple of holes in today because mm. I wish there's still things I wish I knew. Right. OK, so this is a core belief about sand. So this is the thing that drives all of the decisions and all of the things that we believe here. Sand is a beautiful problem. Prioritize, prioritize what matters to you most. I'll say it again. Sand is a beautiful problem. Prioritize <laughs> what you matters most. What that means is most people will say the tanks look way better if they have sand in them. Oh yeah, they're gorgeous. Right? Sand's it, gorgeous. It, it's part of the natural look and you know you can debate yeah. whether or not you actually see sand on the bottom of uh, when you're snorkeling because you really can't. It's usually 20 more feet down, mm. but it doesn't matter. Most people will tell you in a tank, in your house, sand looks better. 100%. Okay. Especially versus a dirty bottom, you know, and even having corals cover it, it looks really kind of weird. Artificial. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but there's all kinds of ups and downs with sand. Uh, and so the outcome of this isn't going to be a right answer. Like, uh, you know, Randy's not right. Ryan's not right. You're not right. Because this could be one of those questions of which is the best option for you. It can also be a question of which is the least worst option for you, <laughs> which is the inverse of either one of those things. Because you really can't solve all problems in this case with one decision. You're just going to have to pick and then decide what you want to do from there. <laughs> so what do we believe matters most? Uh, first thing that we believe matters most is that sand tanks are easier for the first year or two. And I mean, we learned this lesson publicly with the 750XXL. It was a tough two years, bacterial blooms, dinos, the whole nine. Uh, it was built for with flow uh, in mind, uh, being bare bottom. But had we had sand on there, it would have been an easier first two year ride. Okay, so I've seen this enough times to say with almost absolute certainty, say almost, I think I can actually just say absolute certainty. If you put sand in the tank, it will be an easier first two years, especially an easier first six months. There's just way fewer issues. Yeah. Like you don't see the uh, bacterial blooms or it clouds the water. We see those constantly in bare bottom tanks without sand and especially with dry rock. Mm -hmm. uh, and you don't see the dinos as often. You don't see this. And part of the reason that I believe that that's true is people think of surface area where, you know, all the bacteria live is on the surface of the Just rock. Just the rock, yeah. The rock is a calcium carbonate-based rock, and they all live on there. Tons more in the sand. The sand, dude, if you think about 100 pounds of rock and the amount of exposed area on your 100 pounds of rock, versus the 100 pounds of sand, which is crumbled into teeny little bits. It's kind of like that carbon analogy, mm -hmm. where a, table, a teaspoon of carbon, actually, if you were able to flatten out the pore structure, covers an entire football field. Yeah, There's so many, like this honeycomb network of pore structure. Sand, not all that different. Once you crush up all 100 pounds of rock into little bits of sand, way more surface area. And this is where all the food and poo settles out. Yeah. So the food for that bacteria is actually living in the place where it all settles out. And that is why I believe that sand will actually help cycle the tank faster, create biome faster. Mm. It will outcompete some of the organisms that thrive in that environment. Uh, and it's just a lot easier to set up a tank with sand in the beginning. However, inverse. Bare bottoms uh, can be harder for the first two year or two. So if you're willing to embrace that, uh, it's going to be a rough, bumpy ride for the first two. But you want that bare bottom tank. Uh, you can go into it knowing that, man, in two years, this is going to be awesome. So, yeah, it's down the road, the bare bottom has this benefit. A, you're going to have a tremendous amount of flow. So this is really, really popular with stick heads, mm -hmm. right? So I love all my SPS corals. I'm really into it. I want to provide flow. I can't 
the sand is blown all over the damn place. Yeah. Uh, I can't create the amount of flow that I want with these in here. Number one rule. Number two rule is because the sand just becomes a nutrient sink or a time bomb. Like it just soaks up all of the garbage in the tank and you can't really flush it all out of the tank very good. And so when I'm putting pumps on the bottom of the tank and flushing all of the, uh, the food, instead of letting the poo and the shrimp and the pellets settle out in the sand, all that flow keeps it suspended, goes down the overflow where the skimmer and the filter socks and the roller mat and all the filtration, the uh, refugium, everything, it settles out in there and it's all sucked out uh, as part of your filtration. You don't have nutrient issues. You don't have long-term issues in the same way. And so long-term, the, the bare bottom is way more stable mm. in my mind, yeah. right? It has way fewer things that are going to go wrong uh, in the long run. It just has short-term hurdles. <laughs> For two years worth of short-term. You have to decide, man, yeah. like which one of those priorities is important to you uh, because one of these things will be true most of the time for most people. <laughs> yeah. Next uh, we believe matters most is uh, don't go more than a one-inch sand bed. Yeah, like past one inch, uh, it just starts to become a sink for God knows what. Well, not to mention, like, anytime you see some of those deeper sand beds, you know, I may vacuum, and it, it, is kind of, it is difficult to vacuum beyond an inch of sand when you're sucking it up, but you look at the front of the glass and that whole line of sand in the front of the glass, because you can't really vacuum so it is deep, it just looks nasty. Green, ucky, pinks, you can see the little bug trails and, you know, so back in the day, there was a thing called a very deep sand bed or something like yeah, that. And yeah. you'd have like you know, six, eight in inches. And what you do is create areas within the tank that uh, anaerobic. would house anaerobic yeah. bacteria that pull the nitrate and phosphate out of the tank. Okay, cool. But like now, man, between today's skimmer technology, the roller mats of the world, the, the refugiums, the algae scrubbers, nutrients aren't the same just, problem. Yeah, you don't need, if that was a method for controlling nutrients before, it's unnecessary now. Yeah, I mean, it could, but it's, it's not as important mm -hmm. as it once was. Uh, you know, you got nitrate reactors even now. You got all kinds of different things. So that isn't the same thing. But what I will tell you for sure is that in that sand is all kinds of gunk. It's all kinds of organics. It stinks like rotten eggs when you mix it up. It's true. If you go and mix it up in the areas that don't get turned over very often, you could watch all kinds of brown crud come floating out of it. So that tends to happen worse and worse the more that you go over one inch. So... If I was buying anybody counsel, I would stay under one inch, knowing full well that some areas will get little dunes mm. uh, that are, are more than that. But I, I wouldn't shoot for anything beyond that. In fact, if I could, without blowing it all over the place, I'd shoot for like a half inch. I have one, uh, one break to that rule where I would uh, break the one inch sand bed. Uh, and that is uh, my little mangrove tank over there. And uh, uh, you know those... Uh, I have, I think I have uh, six inches of sand in that mm -hmm. little tank over there, but that's because those mangroves need that for their root structure. So you purposely chose that, uh, that plant to thrive and that's the best way to get it to what it needs. That's kind of also like a remote DSB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, having that big, you know, eight inch sand bed in the sump in your or refugium. In your area, refugium. Yeah. And what's cool about that too is you don't have the same issues there as you do everywhere else in the tank because uh, down there you don't have like a power head that one day might fall off and then blow all the sand mm -hmm. and you know like dig a big hole in the pollutants in this thing and <laughs> release all this hydrogen sulfide into the tank or yeah. whatever it's a much safer area in a remote uh, refugium like that uh -huh. okay uh all right so what believe matters most what grade of sand do you use uh, oh, okay, I'll read it. Uh, special grade or bigger in most cases. Don't buy anything smaller. Mm -hmm. well, that's what I mean, when's the last important. time you used anything other than special grade? I don't think I ever have. I've used the Ocean I've, Directs a few times, but 
and it, you know, it's a mix. It it's it. kind of a mix between the uh, the. It's got some ooh like particles in it. It's got some special grade particles in it, just because it's not sifted the same way. If the special grade wins out really well in our biome testing and cycle testing, I would definitely use it in the future. If it doesn't do so good, go special, back to grade, special grade. And I'll say, uh, in terms of uh, sand too, there are ebbs and flows. Do we talk about dry sand in here anywhere? I don't think we do. Mm -hmm. So there's two, special grade comes in dry and it also comes in a, a live format, yeah. right? Okay, the dry stuff is cheaper, especially when you count in the fact that it doesn't have uh, any of the uh, uh, water weight in it. Right. But man, is it dusty. Be prepared to- Rinse it a dozen times because uh, it still comes out with dusty finds. And, and it will, and it won't be like the live sand where you're like, ah, tomorrow will be just fine. It could go on for a week. <laughs> uh, and then if you stir it up again, it will happen all over again. Uh, if you have a, and if you have a filter roller mat, then you're just eating and chewing through filter paper because it's constantly getting clogged. Uh, your filter socks are constantly getting clogged for days on end. I personally wouldn't use dry sand again. Mm. Uh, and so I, the live sand is more expensive, but I'd be curious to hear people chime in if they had similar experience with the dry sand. But the best way if you want to use a dry sand is get a bucket, like a five gallon bucket, coil your garden hose down in the bottom of it, fill the sand on it and turn it on. And what will happen is it'll just kind of turn it over and then the fine, the little dusty fines flow over the edge. And once it runs clear for more than an hour or so, you're probably good. <laughs> so don't just like mix it up. I mean, you need to actually flush all the garbage out of mm -hmm. it. Uh, and then in most cases, like whatever residual droplets of water that's from your hose that's in there is probably reef safe because you're going to dilute it by the magnitude mm -hmm. of a million. Uh, oh, once yeah. you After fill water, drain it that's out. a common question <laughs> in my own belief structure anyway. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next one. Uh, we believe matters most. Clean the sand, but be careful in stirring up what's in the underneath. You know, so clean the sand. Like, uh, this is the part that I waver on. Like, you know, I've talked to people, they're like, hey, just let the sand be the sand. And yes, it's a toilet. But like the problem is, is like it just gets worse and worse and worse over time. It becomes, you know, just soaking up more and more and more of the nutrients in the water over time and all of the garbage in there. And it just becomes a bigger and bigger sink. Just waiting for that time bomb of a pump aimed down at it or something to stir it up. But also what you don't want to do is go take your siphon and just like stir it all up and release it all into the tank. You should, if you're going to clean it, you should probably do it in a more controlled chunks, format. Chunks at a time. Yeah, just like little bits using your siphon and just letting it suck all that brown garbage down the tube. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Do you, How do you feel about cleaning the sand? Uh, well, I have a bare bottom tank, so I don't have to clean the For sand. For a reason. All right. So <laughs> I, it's another one of those things that I know I'm not going to spend the, a whole lot of effort to do. So why would I even have it in the first place? And I will, I will embrace the one to first one to two years. There you go, man. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> this one's actually kind of funny. Hit the next one here. Uh, what we believe matters most is live in a bag is much less dusty, but the live part is not overly valuable. So the live sand on the on the bag includes live bacteria and what have you, and uh, it's, it's it's in fresh water. I I think if you taste the water in the bag of sand, it's not going to be salty. There's other ways to find that out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think it's fresh yeah. water inside the live bag. It's dormant also dormant bacteria. Dormant bacteria that's in the water. They tell you make sure to get the water in there, otherwise you won't add any of the bacteria. But doesn't replicate in salt water. Yeah, it's more of like a like a buffer, mm. you know, to like make sure it gives you a little bit of time to create the natural bacteria cycle in the tank. Uh, so live sand. Technically, I guess, has some live stuff in it, but not really quite what you think. Uh, It'd be nice and if they, I don't think overly valuable. It would be nice if there's a, that comes out after the, the biome conversation starts and biome in a bottle, if you can now actually get uh, your sand and then your biome in a bottle. And like, just forget the marketing jargon of this being live sand and make sure you add all the water and blah, 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 blah. It's like, 
Uh, you need sand and you're going to need this little biome bottle. Yeah, I don't know. Like, well, actually, that's kind of what uh, Aquaforest did, right? Mm -hmm. They have their dry sand and then they give you the two, two little, little bottles. bacteria bottles. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. So what else matters most? Uh, the clarifier bags in the live sand work. I've always thrown them away. And then Jen was like, no, they actually work. And then she was putting uh, some live. She did her first three videos were on live or on sand. And uh, in every one of them, she's like, use a clarifier, use a clarifier. And then I watched the, watched it happen and it works. We actually had here uh, the HNSA that we built and it was covered in that powder from uh, like uh, doing all, correcting all of the, oh, yeah, correct, yeah. covering the mistakes, right? And then the tank, we wanted to film it, but it wouldn't get uncloudy. Dirty. We even put on a, a big, huge canister sediment filters and stuff to filter out the water. And we just couldn't get the cloud out of it. And we're like, man, it's been days. You know, <laughs> we got like really elaborate filter on here. And we tore that little bag open and dumped it in. It was gone in an hour. Yeah. Uh, flocculent. The flocculent stuff. works. The little clarifier <laughs> bag in there works. Use it. So don't, yeah, don't throw those away. Keep them. Uh, we also believe that matters most is bare, ba bare bottom is best done with live rock or exceptionally patient people. Uh, the only reason I'm patient uh, enough is because uh, I can just, uh, I don't need to see corals in that. You know, it's not uh, right now, This at this point, I don't, uh, it's not a rush to fill the tank up with corals. Mm -hmm. So I can be fine uh, having a tank that only got rock in it and flow for, I think, I think it was a year and a half before I actually put my first coral in there, just because I didn't have time. But uh, plus I knew what to expect. My personal counsel, to anybody that asked me is uh, if you're going to do a bare bottom, find a source of live rock, forget the dry rock or be exceptionally patient. <laughs> so like one of those two things, understand what you're getting into. A sterile bare bottom tank is going to have issues that a, a standard tank doesn't. So mm -hmm. find a way to get live rock and you'll probably have a much higher success rate less frustrating journey in the beginning except for it's hard to uh aquascape wet live rock so yeah, there's some there's some trade-offs here and there you're gonna find different trade-offs but uh i wouldn't personally do a bare bottom dry rock again or i would do it i would cycle find a way to cycle that rock for a pretty prolonged period of time yeah do your aquascape it. first cycle it then start setting up your tank. I'd figure out something, man. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we'll find out the biome in a bottle. We'll find out the answers from our experiments here, and maybe I'll change the trajectory of that conversation. But right now, as we uh, uh, know it, and in that spirit, what I believe matters most here is with bare bottoms that don't have sand in them, UV can help a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, until we, so much so that we finally decided to just install it. 100% on the 750 XXL. Uh, uh, why would you not put a UV a UV sterilizer? Well, on it? and so here's the thing about the UV is it will definitely protect the fish when they're installed correctly. But and we talked about having two UVs at different points, oh, you know. Yeah. But now I've found that hey, let's just set it to protect the fish, which is a slower flow rate. And then if we ever need it to help uh, prevent some issues or set it up in the beginning to prevent some of these uh, bacterial or dino issues, or let's set it at the higher flow rate that mm. will solve that. And then once we're past that stage, let's set it up for the fish, you know, or you can, you can go back and forth instead of having two of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes. So what are some hard lessons that we've had with uh, live sand? Uh, I haven't had this one personally, but you talk about it a lot, so you must have seen it happen. But the first hard lesson is a fallen pump. Pump you know, into the sand. I haven't actually experienced this one, but uh, uh, because I guess I use Vortex, and if a pump falls off, it's not running. It doesn't run you know, anymore. In yeah. a lot of cases. But uh, I've seen this one uh, my days on Reef Central a lot when there were so many pumps that were reliant on oh. suction cups, like oh, the maxi yeah, jets yeah, were yeah, suction yeah. cups. Mm -hmm. There were, you know, carbon copies of the tunes that were suction cups. Yeah. There's, there were weak magnets and all that kind of stuff. The magnet get bumped and all of a sudden the pump aims down. It takes all that hydrogen sulfide or whatever that rotten egg smell is, all the nutrients, all the yellow, and it just blows it all up into the tank and does nothing good. Right? <laughs> Uh, it can nuke a whole tank that way, especially if you had like a four inch sand bed 
and God knows what's down in there, yeah. and it's all just immediately released into the tank, whole tank could be gone. Oof, that's yeah. not one I want to see. So, I saw it much more commonly on Reef Central than I've actually seen it in person. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, that, that, I guess that's why I'm a good, uh, I'm a, still a proponent for Vortec pumps. That's, that's all I've ever it used to. It but. doesn't happen. Yeah, that thing <laughs> falls off for whatever reason. It doesn't run anymore. They don't aim down. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting, actually. All right. So uh, another one, hard lesson. Most people think that you could mix grades of sand to fill in spots, and I guess so. But how does it work? Uh, you know, if you put, yeah, it's like taking what's the science experiment that you do in your uh in your kid and you like start with the, some big chunks uh like golf balls and then you put marbles and then you put something else and then you f uh, pour sand in it and guess what all the sand goes all the way past and down to the bottom same thing happens in the in your tank when you mix uh sand sizes like man i want to stop the i don't want my sand to buy i really like the ulay but i don't want it to blow around so maybe i'll mix it with like some crushed coral and uh, that'll kind of hold, hold it together and piece it together. But what ends up happening is the sand, all that soft light sand blows to wherever it's going to go and you're left with big crushed coral or if you didn't mix the sand, then dead uh, bare bottom spots. Usually it's just going to be like, like it makes you with a crushed coral and there'll just be like all the shells and stuff in the middle. Yeah, it looks like, it looks like calcium reactor media on the bottom. One of the things I'll say though is that over time, uh, when you put sand in initially, it blows around the most. Once it starts to build like a biofilm on it, yeah, it, it tends to hold. stick to each other yeah. a little bit more and blow around less. That's true. And so when you mix it, it will separate less uh, when the sand bed is established than when you first poured it in. But in general, know at least what you're getting into. Because you might actually like all the little crushed coral bits and stuff better uh, mm. then you do a bare open. But this is one of the things to think about too, is if you can put things that kind of hold the sand in, like take some of those little aquascape structures that we talked about, the little mini habitats. And like if this, where the sand separates is in the center of the tank, well, put a couple of them kind of around there and see if you can block the flow oh, yeah. from, you know, stirring it all up out of that yeah. location. You might find better uh, locations than just trying to mix all the sand up. You should know that you're getting into this with some cert with some sands that you choose. Like the the ocean is direct. Uh, you're going to see the sand separation because it's not sifted to specific particle sizes. It's true. Hmm. Next one. <laughs> uh, hard lesson is black sand, and I think we've harped on black sand in almost every any time we talk about sand and sand choices. Uh, we did a buyer's guide on, on sand and said, you know, black sand's really cool, uh, but it's just something that we'd constantly avoid. Sand mistakes video, we talked about avoiding black sand, uh, has more magnetic bits in it than any other sand. And I, I've seen some sands, uh, like, uh, I've seen some white sands have little chunks of magnetic bits that you can get onto your, uh, glass cleaner or your, um, algae scraper. Uh, but definitely the black sand stuff, you're going to end up scraping your tank if you're using the soft side. Yeah, I, almost everybody uses a magnet cleaner these days. And so uh, if you use black sand, you just throw the magnet cleaner in the trash. Yeah, don't use it. Because it will it will get pieces, uh, it's essentially volcanic material that's been ground up, you know, like by a mm -hmm. millennia in the sea. And it's filled with whatever came out of the ground. Uh, and so uh, it's not calcium carbonate. And so it will scratch, you'll get underneath in your magnet, it'll scratch your glass. Also, there's two kinds of it. There's really kind of finer grade stuff, which will turn over a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then there's big chunky stuff. Mm -hmm. and the big chunky stuff was actually interesting to me for a minute because it, I was like, oh, I can put this black stuff down the bottom and it probably won't, uh, you know, like get blown all over the place. Uh, and I might uh, be willing to use a normal scraper for it. But the problem is it says because it's really pretty big, it doesn't move at all, nah. it'll just turn purple. <laughs> Eventually, coralline. coralline algae just grows over it and you no longer have black sand, you have purple sand, and then you can mix it up and now you have speckled black and purple sand. <laughs> so black sand- Hides, hides <sighs> things well. Kinda interesting. Most people will be disappointed with yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Uh, next hard lesson is if you reuse the sand, uh, clean it or kill it. So taking sand out of the 160 re and thinking about reusing it somewhere else uh, should come on the heels of 
filling a, a five gallon buckets with it, rinsing it uh, with a garden hose forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And then uh, drying it, sifting it and putting it back, like taking scoops of sand, going straight to the other tank is probably a bad idea. Yeah, if you're going to reuse sand, meaning you're going to move your tank from one location to another location or use the sand somewhere else, like do not do that without mm -hmm. cleaning it. And yes, you're going when you clean it, you're going to destroy the uh, biome that lives on that sand. But it's so much better than polluting the tank with all of the garbage that's in there. Uh, we did that in one of the experience, uh, experiment tanks here, and it killed both the clownfish immediately. Uh, whatever was in that sand when you stirred it up uh, was mm. terrible to the point that it was immediately toxic to those two fish. Yeah. Uh, once we uh, let it settle out again, and all of a sudden uh, it was fine. But like under no circumstances would I ever reuse sand without cleaning it. Somebody may have somehow threaded the gauntlet out there and give the advice that you could. Anybody that uh, uh, I wanted to give good, sound, high percentage success advice to, I would go clean the sand. I mean, sand is all used. It all came out of the ocean. <laughs> it was all used at some point in time, but it was cleaned yeah. uh, and many times. It was sifted, and it doesn't have the same things that, uh, in this case, uh, it's not a new big nutrient sink in the tank. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So what's next? 